Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here in Frankfurt, Germany at the ISC 2018 conference, and today we're at the NEC booth with Oliver Tennant. Oliver, thanks for having me back this year. Oh, it's all my pleasure, Rich, <laughs> as usual. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's start at the beginning for folks who might not know, who is NEC and who do you help in this supercomputing space? Yes, okay, so as you know, NEC is originally a, or is a Japanese company, so we are from NEC Germany covering HPC business for all of EMEA. So Oliver, what are you showcasing this week at ISC? Well, as you know that this year we have launched the latest incarnation of our SX product called SX Aurora Tsubasa. It's the latest vector engine coming along as a PCI Express card you put in a, in a standard server environment. What is this thing going to be good for in general? What kind of codes? Well, it's good for all kinds of codes that vectorize very well. I'm not an expert at code development, yeah. but there are some kind of applications where parallelization on a code level means you need some specific hardware to boost performance, and Aurora is exactly done for that. So, Mimosa-san, thank you for having me here today. Can you give me an idea of the, the speed of one of these devices? Is there a metric, like Linpack or something? Anybody? Yeah, uh, today uh, there are many famous benchmarks for HPC region. And for example, it, uh, HP Limpa case. Yes. Limpa case, uh, sustained performance per single card is basically the same as today's x86 processor, single node. And for example, uh, HP CZ case are much higher performance. And in the case of stream, much, much higher sustained performance per node compared to x86 processor. Well, let me ask you about vectors. Why would a scientist want to use vectors for computing? Yes, uh, for example, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, uh, processor performance strongly depended on clock frequency. And 10 years ago, uh, increasing number of cores uh, increases performance of the system. And today, uh, vector length or vector weights increases uh, performance of the system. Because our today's scalar processor has a wider CMD, and they call that is vector. And, but we have over 30 years experience to develop uh, this kind of vector processor. And we also have a vector compiler. And we can extract much higher sustained performance yeah. from hardware, such kind of vector hardware. So Eric, thanks for having me back. I have a question about applications for these vector machines. What does the programming model or environment look like if somebody wanted to port their code to this device? We have, uh, first of all, a very simple programming model uh, that is the vector engine native mode. That is the simplest. That means you just compile your code with C, C++, Fortran. Uh, you, your code can use uh, MPI. Your code can call system calls. So although this looks like an accelerator, it works like a full, full-featured Linux machine, actually. Um, the second uh, option is to extend this model and do a kind of offloading onto the vector host, which is an x86-64 right now, uh, such that in case you have parts of the code that you don't want to vectorize, like uh, I.O. preprocessing or things that just don't vectorize well, um, so you can call and use them or run them on the vector host, on x86-64. That, that would make up a kind of a hybrid code with the main program running on the vector engine. And then there is the classical accelerator model. Uh, um, I'm, I'm personally working on, on providing the infrastructure for that together with my colleagues from Japan. Um, that is main program running on the x86 vector host and offloading kernels as usual in uh, OpenCL or OpenMP uh, target uh, or CUDA uh, to the vector engine.